aim of today's video lesson is to develop our knowledge and understanding of emotional factors that may impact on the performance development process. At the end of this lesson, hopefully we can identify and define emotional factors and explain in full how emotional factors may impact on performance development. One thing to note before we do begin is that we will be focusing mainly on performance development rather than emotional factors impact on performance itself. As a quick refresher, pause this video and read the emotional sub-factors which are on the factors table on the slide. Now, as a starter task, write down each of the emotional sub-factors and then write one or two sentences to define what each of these are. Pause the video and do that now. You can now check the answers that you've written to the answers which are on the slide. As an add-on to the starter task, you can also play a quick game of Pictionary if you have somebody to work with. To do this, pick two emotional factors and then draw a quick sketch to try and depict what each of these are. See if your partner can guess from your sketch what that factor is. Moving on to explaining how emotional factors may impact the performance development process. In order to answer this and fully explain, we need to follow a three-step rule. Candidates must state a factor. They must give context to their answer by stating a situation or example. And then finally, they must state the impact and include all of this in order to gain one full mark. Pause this video and read the example I have given for resilience and make sure that you are clear where the factor, context and impact lie within this answer. Task one, pause this video and rewrite the answer on the slide for happiness. Then highlight or break up with brackets where the factor, the context and the impact lie within this given answer. Check your answer to make sure that you have given the correct factor, context and impact within the example given for happiness. Task two. We're going to watch a quick video clip and I want you to add to the answer that I have given on the slide, which is in blue. The factor is anger. I want you to then add on to that and give the context and the impact. Pause this video, rewrite the factor, which is given in blue, and then add on your context and your impact. Check your answer and compare to the one which is on the slide. Have you given a clear factor, context and impact, and have you given enough detail in order to get the one mark?
Task three, we're going to watch another video clip, this time on a young gymnast. Again, I have given you the factor in blue, and you're going to add your context and impact to this answer. <laughs> you don't have to be turned in, but just to the front. So every gymnast will experience fear, and each of them handle it in their own way. As a gymnast and a coach, you have to learn how to push past that fear threshold. There's always a semblance of nervousness. I remember at 15, I woke up one day and was just scared, scared of my gymnastics, scared of going backwards, and stood on the beam with my arms up for about three hours before I figured out this is all in my head and I can just swing my arms and do it. Your body knows how to do it. You've done it so many times. There's so many repetitions. It's when we let our brains get in the way, we experience fear on a bigger level. Fear is normal. How you deal with it is where the strength comes out. Some kids, it's a keyword. Success. Trust. At every turn, that fear can become present. I'll never trick you. Some days it's more than others. Some days it's less. It really nice. Really depends on how you feel emotionally when you come into the gym. Sometimes it's I'm tired from school, I'm worn out, my body's tired from gym. Coaches experience frustration and a lack of understanding as to why the athlete isn't doing what we're asking them to do. If we can allow them to feel, okay, this is a normal feeling I'm experiencing. Step up there with that confidence. Don't let it wait. And not like, first wait. There we go, you got it. Don't let the fear win. You got it, kiddo. Right here, fear is normal. However they feel, sometimes it's not. That actually exacerbates the fear. It's up to us to engage every day. As a gymnast, you've got to learn to trust. So you've got to learn to trust your coaches. So you have to learn to trust yourself, trust your body. When fear is happening, you lose that trust. We haven't done that in a long time. They have to learn how to be so hard on themselves and forgive themselves for experiencing that fear. We're here as coaches to serve. To inspire. Yes. That's it. And we're here to lead. If they show up willing to put one foot in front of the other, there's always a solution. Pause the video on this slide, write out the factor which is given in blue, and add your context and impact for this answer. Again, check and compare your answer to the model answer on the slide. Make sure you've given factor, context and impact and that you've given enough detail in order to gain the mark. Finally, task four, I want you to write your own answers to the exam style question which is below. Explain how emotional factors may impact on the performance development process worth four marks. In order to answer this in full, you must give four different points, all of which include a factor, context and impact each in order to gain four full marks. Pause the video on this slide and attempt your answer either in your jotters or on a piece of paper. Check and compare your answers before that I have given.
hopefully now we are more confident in our knowledge and understanding of emotional factors that may impact on the performance development process. Look at the success criteria and give each a rating from red, amber and green to identify how confident you are that you have achieved each of these success criteria. If you feel you've struggled, please speak to your teacher and ask for further help in each of the given areas. 